Document 360 versus Confluence. Hey guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we will be doing a quick comparison between Confluence and Document 360, how both of these platforms are like in terms of the interface use, what are some of the major differences and what are the similarities between the two softwares, as well as some other features that both of them might have in common, as well as things like their analytics, drives, workflows, and and PDF support system. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into it, we need to understand what is the purpose of both of these platforms. Now, both are knowledge management softwares, which enable you to create a knowledge management base. Now, what is the major difference or what is Confluence and what is Document 360? Well, both are built for collaboration, but Document 360 focuses on the knowledge management aspect, while Confluence is a team workspace and it is built for internal collaboration within your team. So it is used as more of a service management software uh, rather than a team software for just knowledge management. Now, if we take a look at Confluence over here, you can see that you can create workflows and you can create a simple work management portfolio. Then you can also go ahead and click on Atlassian and use it in collaboration to the Jira software. So this is pretty much uh, in cohesion with all of the Jira softwares like Trello and Jira work management, Jira service management, so if you want a seamless experience on your workflows, then you can definitely be more inclined to use Confluence as your knowledge management platform. However, this focuses more on the team building aspect if you are focusing on actual content or knowledge management. So if you take a look at the workflows over here at the Document 360 account, so you can see if I click on view site over here and open up the document 360 site you can see it directly focuses on the knowledge management aspect so you can see the documentation uh, content that i created is present over here and it focuses directly on the knowledge management in any form that you want to keep it at but if we take a look at the Confluence version, so you can see that you will have your service projects. You have a lot more rather than just basic knowledge management. You have a lot more on their platform. And depending on the needs that you have, you know, it's not knowledge management. You can see that they have these different documents and these documents are more so related to be able to be shared between the workspace uh, members or between the employees of the business rather than being shared with the public. Now, if we go on ahead and take a deeper dive, you can see that Confluence has team spaces. They encourage team members to work together and you can differentiate multiple teams in one Confluence account. So you can go ahead and take a look at your account and whenever you are adding all more people. So you can see over here that you have your administration account settings. So if you go ahead in your Confluence account and invite members to the Confluence workspace, then you can specifically we enter multiple teams within your workspace so let's say this as our workspace and we can go on ahead and click on create over here and then you can add a page and then add the access to that page to a specific team as well. Now, if we go on ahead to the software project spaces, you can also keep track of individual projects as well as a overarching project for the company or the business. You also have spaces for documentation, so you can organize technical documents in one place for team members to use. So, for example, if I use Confluence as my ticket management platform, then I can add all of the templates or all of the basic information that any of my employees might need whenever they are trying to resolve a issue with customer CRM. So whenever they are trying to communicate with a customer regarding their issue, they can access the files present on Confluence. Now, in terms of knowledge base spaces, uh, for sorting answers to common questions, that would be beneficial to your team. You know, as I said previously, ticketing systems can be managed on Confluence, as well as creating your own personal space and keeping your own personal notes. However, what it differentiates from Confluence and what the differences between Confluence and Document 360 are beginning to show over here. So Document 360 is custom built to provide a knowledge base for your team and you can choose to make that knowledge public or private by restricting access to IP addresses or to login. So 
Confluent is very much built for internal teams, while with Document 360, you can choose to share your resources with both internal and external audiences. So you can see in my event management portfolio or website, I have made documentation a public item. So you can see that any of my customers could even visit on, uh, I could add articles on what to do if you receive a defected item or what to do if you do not like the customer management platform. So that enables me a more custom hold on the information that I want to make private or want to make public on my Document 360 platform. Then if we take a look at the common use cases for Confluence. So you can see that Confluence has the Jira input as well. So they are able to integrate some more workspace oriented features like team management and project management. But in terms of keeping knowledge bases as well as specific documentation and drives, they don't have access to drives like you would be able to do on Document 360. So you can see if you go ahead on Document 360 on your left, you have Drive and then you have Analytics. So with Analytics, you're going to be able to see the geography, the performance of the articles or of the knowledge that you are providing. That is a feature that is not present in Confluence, nor are you able to get the kind of content tools because Confluence focuses on internal team resources Courses, while Document 360 has the ability to do both and they allow you to also be able to monitor the content or the knowledge bases with detailed analytics on who is viewing what, how frequently content is being viewed, what is the use for that content and you can also do content reuses on the Document 360 platform and all of these features are what set Document 360 apart from Confluence. Now, you can see that in terms of knowledge management, you can go ahead and use both of these. Both of these would be good, but if you are using Confluence to share articles with your customers, you would have to create a separate space for each individual product or service if you're going to use Confluence. However, if you use Project 360, you can just create a portal or a website like this, like they would actually help you out in creating this. And then you can just add all of the information that you want to convey to your customers on the Document 360 website. Now, moving on ahead in terms of project collaboration, you can do that on both of these. You can create multiple teams as well as you can uh, monitor employee engagement to some extent on both. Now, Confluence can be used to interact with your team and share news. However, if you're wanting to monitor your team's access, so if you want to monitor the team's content viewings and you want to monitor the analytics of the knowledge, so you're going to be able to do that in a better way on the Document 360 platform rather than Confluence. Now, if you're losing Confluence for a knowledge base, then you can simply go on ahead and click on create, create your space, and everyone knows how to do that. You can do the same thing with uh, Document 360 as well, but there are some key differences. So you can go on ahead and click on create over here and begin creating the one-on-one -on -one template or any kind of title that you want. If you go on ahead into Document 360, you can see over here, you can just click on new and you can choose to add an article or add a new category of articles. You can copy existing ones, link existing ones, or copy from a basic template, and you can save some standardized templates that you might want to reuse. For example, how to register an account and how to log in and register to your account. So both of these have similar information. So you can go on ahead and make a sample or template where the basic information is conveyed, and then you can make two separate articles from that basic information. And you can just click on new article and enter information and click on create over here and now you can see over here it's going to be pretty similar from here on out both of these are articles and you can go on ahead and type in all of the information that you want to convey and you also can do information and warnings and errors on your document 360 platform which is a feature that is super helpful in specifically creating knowledge management because you can add warnings or information that might be super 
key to the person doing the article. For example, if I want to set a error warning for some of my customers, if they do check out in a certain way, they might face a error. So I can add that warning in a specific warning catalog for my customers as well. And that is a feature that is not available on the Confluence platform. So in terms of being able to create a knowledge management system, if you just want to create a knowledge management system for your internal team, then you can definitely be using Confluence. However, if you want to create a knowledge management system that is both for your internal and external team, then you can definitely check out Document360. Both are good platforms and I would suggest that you take a look at the needs that you have for your business to make a better decision for it you. Now, if you want a team collaborative software, then Confluence is going to be better for you. But if you want to make a specific knowledge base where you can easily customize your knowledge base and uh, be able to convey a certain company message or be able to convey a certain brand image to both the public and your internal company, then Document360 is going to be the better option for you. So that was it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and I will catch you guys in the next video.